everyone, it's Lars from Unicorn Reviews here and we're going to be taking a look at the Sony DC DSCQX100 today. Uh, I'm going to start off with the uh, the box which is a uh, cylindrical box, so uh, top you just get the Sony logo, very uh, minimalistic. Uh, and that on the, uh, well I guess would be the front, you then get Sony, um, their stupid catch line and the cyber shot and then some shiny um, product uh, logo. On the side you get your barcodes and some information about the product itself. Um, they call it a digital still camera. I actually um, bought it for videos to give you guys proper image quality. So you got an Exmor R CMO sensor in here. Carl Zeiss lens. Um, it supports micro SD and then Sony's own memory stick M2. Um, has an aperture of f1.8, um, 20.2 uh, megapixels. Uh, obviously, it c you need the uh, Sony Play Memories app to use it. So it comes sealed. I already uh, took the seal off. Uh, even better, I already used this camera for quite a while, and um, I kind of have to go somewhere, and which is why I decided to film it now because I'm gonna cut this thing off which uh, gives you a, uh, a barcode with more information on how to actually, well, not a barcode, a QR code and then more stuff but let's put the camera aside for a second the uh, the box itself is everything's round, the camera is protected by this thingy nothing uh, special you get um, the main instruction booklet with the uh, the Wi-Fi SSID and your Wi-Fi password, which you can't change, I think. Uh, there is a, a text file in the camera itself. Maybe if you change it there, I'll try that later on. This is just the unboxing. So just um, nothing anyone's ever going to read. More paper. Stuff in what language is this? Korean, I guess. Dot KR. Um, more paper, how to register your product, and a European information document if you're in Europe. Um, other accessories are um, the back cap to uh, mount to your phone, a battery. I don't really think it came packaged like this. I couldn't quite remember how everything was packaged. So this is a, a 600 and something uh, amp hour battery 600 exactly 600 apparently not an awful lot but it doesn't have a screen or anything a wrist strap and a, uh, a USB to um, mini USB uh, sadly though it doesn't really come um, with a net power adapter or a, a USB uh, wall socket adapter Anyway, the camera itself looks like this. Um, it's pretty small. That's pretty much the front. You can see uh, it's a Vario Sonar T Asterix 1.8 to 4.9 aperture uh, with a focal length of 10.4 to 37.1. Um, got your zoom in, zoom out, take a picture or start a video, and a Zeiss logo. Um, you know, once again stating what it actually is. On the side you get a, a little e-ink screen uh, which can show your battery status, your SSD status, um, that sort of stuff, and another Sony logo. And on the, the bottom you get a, uh, a mount for a tripod or a monopod or a bipod, whatever you want to use. And then it also says um, the Xmore R again and the Wi-Fi. On this side you can then open it. Um, there you go. Inside you have a uh, SD card slot or M2 slot, I already have an SD card in there and your mini USB to charge it. When you are charging it uh, next to the on off bot button here this uh, thingy will... why doesn't this camera ever focus? So annoying. Um, that will then turn uh, orange when your thingy is completely charged it will just shut off. This is for your stereo microphone and this is just a, uh, a logo. Oh sorry about that. On the back, um, again, information, you can slide the back off, put the battery in, 
and then what you can also do is with this cap um, you know just like you were to mount a, a lens on a body there's some uh, thing to note to let you know um, where to line it up and then when you actually line it up you just lock it in place like that then these flaps open the top one uh, can slide out and you can mount it to your phone and start taking pictures so that's pretty much it for the unboxing um, let's now continue with um, quality tests uh, quality tests um, now I'm not gonna hit it with a hammer or anything because that would be wrong um, so I'm just gonna talk about uh, build quality um, and some things that are cool and some things that are slightly annoying so um, if you want to take the back off you pull this one back rotate it it comes off right I showed that earlier um, the reason I show that is because say you have it mounted to a tripod and you want to swap the battery and the tripod mount is here then depending on the tripod you have um, this thing won't go down so that might be quite annoying um, if you use tripods a lot like I do um, another thing I'm, I'm just gonna turn it on for that so just press on then you get your mobile phone or tablet if you're one of those weird people that use use tablets to film it so you just get this screen then you can use the NFC to uh, connect to it so you just like touch it like that and then this one shows up you just press it really um, of course the first time you have to enter uh, the password alright so uh, once your phone uh, stopped ringing while you're doing a video um, this is the screen you get um, so this is pretty much the photography mode um, I'm just gonna go uh, into video mode first so you just press mode and then film I would like to maybe see a slider like on Android um, but yeah uh, that's pretty much the only thing you get there is a, a small settings menu uh, where you can um, change your focus focus system so this is continuous autofocus or you can also set it to manual focus um, you can choose how uh, it beeps when you uh, record it starts beeping and you can format the drive that's pretty much the only thing you can change um, when you're using video mode and this is the uh, update 2.0 which is the reason I waited quite a while to do this video because I've been using the camera for over a month now so this is pretty much what you get um, when you use um, photo mode which I guess most people are going to use it for so um, you have intelligent auto superior auto you have uh, P mode so it just the only thing you can change really is your ISO setting um, you have uh, aperture priority so in here you can set your priority uh, your aperture manually um, it does change though so when you're completely zoomed in because it has a 10 times optical zoom when you are completely zoomed in your aperture uh, goes to uh, 4.9 which you know isn't too too great uh, but stock it does you know completely zoomed out uh, it gives you an aperture of um, 1.8 which is great for doing some bokeh um, so anyway you can change stuff uh, like for example your shutter time your white balance or uh, you know compensation and your ISO setting and if you put it into um, aperture mode you can uh, change your aperture from anything up from uh, 1.8 all the way up to 11 if you want like really soft fo photographs so most people will just leave it into um, superior auto um, if you wanna zoom you can use this T button here and as you can see the camera will zoom it can also zoom out again now of course you also have this button here on the side so as you can see zoom in and zoom out um, you can also if it's on a autofocus you can use this ring for the zoom uh, the ring I like the way it rotates like the friction in there it's it's not it doesn't rotate very easily well you know it rotates very easily but not as smoothly as you would think but I kinda like that um, oh sorry um, what you can do is 
set it to uh, manual focus uh, at which point this one becomes your focus ring so it's not like linked to anything um, mechanically it's all electronically linked and with that in mind I would like really like it if they um, gave you some option to set the um, the sensitivity of the uh, the focus ring because in my opinion it, it's not quite fast enough so as a comparison I just quickly uh, went to get another lens um, this one has the uh, the focus ring here as you can see there's like 30 degrees uh, with this one you need like one and a half turns um, you know to focus from one end to the other um, size wise because this is a uh, an 18 to 55 millimeter kit zoom lens um, size wise it's quite yeah that's not an image is it so it's quite similar um, the Sony QX100 is slightly thinner than your uh, your average uh, crop sensored lens um, as I said it has a, a 10 times optical zoom um, so the um, the what is it again the uh, 10.4 to 37.1 kind of converts to a 28 millimeter focal length all the way up to um, a 100 millimeter focal length I guess um, so that's your zoom really uh, but yeah it's it's smaller than just the lens so if you were to compare it to a, a full body DSLR or even uh, something like a micro, micro four thirds camera um, you'll notice that uh, it's quite a bit smaller um, however uh, they advertise it as something you put on a smartphone um, so you should be able to put this in a pocket well I mean I can tell you guys right now it's um, how big is it it's five centimeters so it's not really gonna fit in your pocket really well uh, for ladies you know if you have a purse easy uh, just put it in your purse um, but yeah and that's without the uh, the back cap but it is smaller than uh, like a DSLR or a compact camera uh, however because it's round it's quite odd um, to take with you um, size of the, um, the glass as you can see if you can actually see it there is some glass in there and you know it's not ridiculously small like with a, a phone uh, by the way for comparison the conclusion is recorded with this um, this part is recorded with a Ascent P6 and the um, unboxing was recorded with I think it was with an Ascent Mate so if you compare it to just a crop sensor lens it already has quite smaller glass but other than that though um, it is surprisingly good in image quality so what I'm gonna do right now is uh, take pictures a bunch of them uh, I took some at a car show uh, I took some outside I just took a bunch of pictures really I'm just gonna show you all of them and then um, the camera test is pretty much um, the conclusion where you guys can see uh, image quality which is 1920 by uh, 1080 at 30 FPS well 29.97 but whatever um, I already used it for like quite a while so I'm pretty happy with the image quality of it I'll tell you that much but um, yeah I'll be uh, back with pictures and I'll be off camera alright guys the uh, picture picture quality test uh, I took it to the, uh, the Brussels uh, car show uh, where they also had bikes and who doesn't like bikes so as you can see it's it's quite good uh, of course that's like perfect light but there's still some contrast with the uh, the areas off stage where there's less light um, so the contrast is quite good uh, picture quality is quite good the white is a bit um, over uh, saturated well overexposed sorry and um, yeah it's pretty cool uh, moving on to some ugly ass Peugeot um, still a lot of detail you can at least I can see it right here obviously YouTube um, kinda ruins quality um, but all of like the the rust ish thingies they really show out you can see the grain in the carbon fiber everything is really really sharp um, same here with uh, Sebastian's um, hill climb car really good detail you can see the, uh, the tiny little um, pieces of rubber on the tire 
quite cool. Um, again, right here, maybe maybe a tiny bit overexposed, um, but it's all pretty pretty good. Uh, also, in the background, things are are still quite sharp because I use the uh, the wide angle, the uh, twenty eight millimeter equivalent. Um, same here, really really sharp picture. So. And this was a slightly darker environment, which is why it might be called a bit overexposed. Uh, all pictures were shot in a intel in auto intelligence intelligent auto plus. That's the one, and it's pretty uh, pretty good quality overall. Sadly, though, when you see something really nice and you want to quickly take a picture, it can be a bit blurry. Um, this uh, Lotus, however, is uh, the the color. I really really like the color with this thing. It's like it, it kind of does its own HDR but without knowing about it, um, which is obviously because you don't get any uh, raw data, you just get JPEGs. And the JPEGs look really, really good with this camera. Um, so yeah, first of our outside picture, so this is just a close-up, that um, so widest angle, uh, 1.8 aperture, and um, the picture was probably taken about 5 centimeters away from the object. So you can get really, really close up to something. Um, right here it doesn't have something like uh, what well, Nikon has their active D lighting so you can see the sky uh, together with you know that just separately lights different areas of the picture it doesn't do that so it's quite overexposed this one um, here though you know just an old gate really um, looks pretty good though the picture not the gate um, some bokehliciousness here um, you can see with the 1.8 aperture you get a lot of detail and then everything else is just really really blurry which is lovely um, same here this was shot with quite some zoom on it uh, don't worry by the way the uh, that's not that's water on the mirror not paint um, guess the car and I'll get you a like on your comments everyone likes likes I guess um, so ISO test. This one was shot at 20 megapixels, which is um, 4 on 3, um, which is 4,864 pixels wide and 3,648 pixels high, so uh, plenty, I guess. Uh, this picture shot at ISO 12,800. Um, it's usable, I guess, uh, when you see this sort of stuff people put on their social media at times. Uh, I guess this would be a really good picture at the highest ISO setting. When you uh, move it down to 6400, the pixels get what I would call usable. Uh, the blue duck still has a tiny bit of noise in it, but nothing, nothing too um, drastic. ISO 1600, and the, pic uh, the, the pictures really get nice, so no more noise. Uh, when you put it in full auto, it won't ever go above 1600 as well, I noticed, so everything's really, really good. Uh, no noise, nice colors, and then of course want to finish off uh, ISO 160. Uh, quite, I think I had to use like a uh, a two second sh shutter time uh, because it was shot in almost complete darkness. Um, you know, some a room where you could hardly walk around without hitting your toe on a cupboard or something. But it really looks uh, pretty good. Uh, these pictures. So let's now do the conclusion. Alright guys, uh, your first look at the video and uh, not the audio quality because I already recorded um, audio when I was going over the ISO uh, low light tests um, at which the camera shined rather well. Um, so as always what I do is I start off with the award and the Sony QX100 um, gets a platinum award. Uh, it's very rare that I give one like that because mostly a platinum award is something that's really really different and just revolutionizes something and with this camera it's a very good package and if there were let's say a hundred different models of it I would give it a gold award but Sony is the only one who does this and they probably patent, put a patent on it as well so that's kind of what Sony does isn't it um, so yeah it gets a platinum award because it's not terribly expensive it is more expensive if you want uh, similar image quality, you can just take a, 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 a D3200 or an entry level DSLR or maybe a slightly uh, higher end Micro Four Thirds camera or you can get pretty much whatever um, in whatever form factor. 
But the, rate, the reason it's so cool is because it just mounts to your phone, if it actually fits on your phone, because it doesn't fit on this one. So uh, any phone over 5.5 inches, I would say, don't even bother, it's not going to work. Um, but this week there were some leaks on Sony's uh, website with different size um, clap, clamps, uh, so that it will actually fit on tablets and everything, if you're weird enough to take pictures with a tablet. Um, so, build quality is very, very good. Um, maybe the, uh, the focus ring is not quite sensitive enough. Uh, too sensitive, of course, also isn't good. So if you're going to use it on a tripod and you have a lot of time to take the picture, it's going to work really well to have a, uh, a focus system that you can control um, so detailed. But, um, yeah, the image quality is great. Video quality is pretty good. Uh, 1080p now with the... Uh, the upgrade that was there because earlier on it was 1440 by 1080 and they used a uh, 1.333 um, aspect um, pixel ratio so I guess the pixels in the sensor still have the same ratio they just use more of them and then they compress it later on um, the image quality uh, I already said it was really good but it only shoots uh, JPEGs so you can't choose what sort of output files you want no raw uh, but that's not too bad actually because it really deals with the JPEGs really really well. The, everything looks very good when it comes out. And when I was doing the low light photographs um, on my screen it was kind of like there was a lot of noise on there. And so then when I actually saw the finished uh, p photograph I was like hey that's a lot better than I expected it to be. So all of that kind of adds up to that Platinum Award. Um, price wise I don't like to talk about pricing because it changes all the time. And uh, the QX100 on Sony's official website, it says it's 450 euros. Uh, I got mine in Austria for um, 330-ish. Of course, you still need an SD card to go with that. Maybe another battery. Um, however, battery life is pretty good. It has a, a 600 um, milliamp hour battery. Um, it kind of lasts a quarter of the time with my phone. Uh, but my phone has a massive battery, um, so your usual phone is going to last, your, your camera can drain half your phone battery time-wise. Uh, of course, that was with the camera completely on, I, uh, I was able to do a complete car show, go everywhere, every hall, and uh, that was like three hours or something, with the camera constantly being on. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, you kind of need to let it keep it on all the time, because um, sadly, uh, even though the connection is really good and quite fast, um, sometimes you know you can't just pull it out of your pocket and shoot like you would do with a point and shoot, really. So, but that's of course um, part of the form factor this thing comes in. Um, so yeah, it's a great camera for everyone, really. Um, it just takes the pictures for you like a camera should do. It just captures the moment in quite a beautiful way, a lot of detail. And so yeah, if you like the video, like the video, if you dislike the video, dislike it, um, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to Unicorn Reviews.